Alright, so welcome. This is going to be a bit of a strange video than what you might be used to on this channel because it's not entirely for jokes or laughs, but I'm going to explain to you, or try to at least, what Legends of Runeterra is, how the game works with gameplay in the background, and generally what kind of stuff you should expect. I got to play Legends of Runeterra over a week ago when I went to the Riot offices in Dublin, and oh boy was I not allowed to even say the smallest thing about it. But the cat's out of the bag now, and I'm sure you're really interested to know how this game works, so let's get into it. Before we begin though, this video took a lot of writing and prep, and I had to get on planes and stuff, and then I got sick, so just please like, subscribe, and you know, also I'll be posting some more videos of the game, just kind of spamming it to the second channel to show how it operates, and a couple on this channel as well, so expect to... Uh, a couple of full games on the second channel with specific decks talking about it in the next day or so or there's probably some live right now um, so yeah go subscribe to that as well and I can show you some more in-depth stuff over there so yeah what is Legends of Runeterra I know many people uh, thought there was gonna be a fighting game but it is in fact a card game almost like a cross between Hearthstone and Magic the Gathering but League of Legends characters now I'll do my best to explain the boards so you can follow everything and then after that we can kind of get into how the fighting works and generally how the game is played out. So first of all, the exciting thing is the champions. There are a bunch of champions in the game from all different regions of Runeterra as well as plenty of war characters and stuff that help flesh out the actual world. If you are a war buff, you're probably going to get a kick out of this, I will say. Champion cards kind of work like this. Each one has a specific level up condition that once they manage to attain, they get way more health and attack as well as maybe upgrading an ability or gaining an ability. So for Teemo, if he hits your Nexus in his first form, he puts 5 explosive mushrooms onto your deck that deal 1 damage every time you draw one. But they can stack. Now when he gets 15 mushrooms put onto your deck through any means, he levels up and every time he hits your Nexus, once he's leveled up, he will double the amount of mushrooms in your deck, meaning that you can very easily get destroyed just by drawing cards. Now, this is the kind of like unique, crazy thing that Legends of Runeterra has with the, the leveling of all the champion cards, and there are a bunch of unique level up animations for all the champions, and they are all sick as hell. There'll be some playing in the background so you can enjoy the majesty, but now, onto the board. Now, if you are a Hearthstone player, there's going to be very little that really needs explained to you. However, I understand that a lot of people probably aren't into card games, and this is the first one that they're playing. And they're only playing it because they're interested in League of Legends, and they just want more of that spicy League goodness. So, we can try and keep this short and sweet, but also not insulting your intelligence. So, these are your mana crystals, and this underneath it is your spell mana reserves. Every turn, you get one extra mana to play with. Any Hearthstone player is going to be incredibly familiar with this. However... The little orbs under your mana are spell mana, these are something that you probably have never seen before. Any mana that you don't use during your turn gets added into the orbs, so you can use it at a later time in any turn afterwards. Only three can be saved, and they can only be used towards spells, so you can't invest that extra three mana on a minion. However, it could mean that you put out some big spells early on with just a little bit of conservation. This is the Nexus, pretty simple stuff. When a champion or a follower hits this and the HP reaches zero, you either win or you lose. This is the card list of things that have been played so far. This little eye shows you the outcome of what you're about to do, like kind of like seeing into the future a little bit to see what the board will look like after you use a spell. This is the bench. Any inactive minion or champion you've summoned here will be here. This is the battlefield. The icons of the sword and shield indicate who is attacking, who is defending. Any active minions currently fighting will be placed here. And these are the poros. They don't really do much, but you can poke them and then sometimes they growl at you. So turns work definitely in a bit of a strange way. They can go on for a bit of a long time and if you've played card games this will be possibly a little bit strange to you. Um, and also specifically if you aren't a major card game player like me, it can seem really weird at first. So honestly, I think the easiest way to show you how the beginning of a game works and how the game works itself would be to just play a bit of the game and break down exactly what is happening to show you how everything operates. Now the game almost plays a little bit like tennis, once a player plays a card, depending on what kind of card it is, the other player gets a chance to respond to that card or play their own. So it becomes a bit of a back and forth. Each turn one person gets a chance to attack, the other has to defend, both can still summon minions and cast spells as normal during these turns though, regardless of whether or not you're on attack or defense. So first turn, I'm running a Fiora Shen deck, she has a really cool ability where she levels up that I'll explain a little bit later on. Firstly though, I'm on attack, so I summon a low-cost follower. My opponent has a chance to summon now, but chooses not to. 
Uh, I could have attacked, but I forgot because it was like my first ever game and I'm a noob. And we end up swapping sides. So first thing here is a turn only ends when both players pass their turn in a row. So it could go on forever as long as there's one person who isn't passing and still has cards to play. But once both players actually pass their turn, we get to round two and we both refill our mana. He plays a totem that gives some extra mana at the beginning of a round. I decided that I wanted to play my challenger hawk and since I'm not attacking this turn, I pass my turn until I'm back on attack. Now, different cards have different properties. I'll explain as many as I can as soon as possible. However, the only one that you need to know now is called Challenger and it's the most important one. I play Fiora on my attacking turn and despite the enemy summoning a 5-2, Fiora and some of my deck have an ability called Challenger, which means that when we go to attack, we can actually decide what minion on the enemy's bench blocks us. Now, this will be the first time we've actually seen blocking in this gameplay. If you're a Magic the Gathering player, this may kind of seem somewhat familiar, maybe you can draw parallels here. Basically what happens is, when somebody goes to attack, they line up their champions from left to right on the battlefield. The enemy has a chance to line up theirs left to right and decide what champions they want to block it. Any champions that aren't blocked or have abilities that go through block, end up hitting the Nexus for face damage and taking that amount of HP off of the enemy's health. For the time being though, Fiora's level up ability requires her to actually get kills, so thankfully we can pull his totem with Challenger to block and we can get rid of that nasty looking 5-2 with our Hawk that's only 2-1, clearing the board and getting a little bit of face damage too. So now you may be wondering why Fiora's vital signs have procced over the enemy's nexus. Well the thing with Fiora is, if she manages to get 4 kills on minions in a single game, Regardless of the enemy's Nexus HP, she ends up just destroying the Nexus and winning the game, which is really, really hilariously funny to do. Now, I will post this full game with a lot more commentary on it on my second channel if you're a little bit more interested in watching that. But hopefully you kind of get the gist of the back and forth of the game. You go, I go, you go, I go, it's that kind of thing. I promise you I'm trying to keep this short and sweet, but if you do really want to learn more, I'm going to be posting an hour of just straight up gameplay explaining everything that happens on the main channel and a bunch of full games on the second channel as well if you want to get a little bit more into it. And I'm sure there's plenty of other resources out there for you to learn a little bit more about it. But now we've looked at the actual game, there are a bunch of card types that are really, really easy to learn and very simple to know what they do. I may use a lot of Hearthstone terminology here, but honestly, I'll do my best to make it super duper simple for you. Deck building, that's something that's a little bit harder for me to go into, but I will try my best. Now, with deck building, you can choose from one or two out of six regions to mix and match your deck with. You can have up to six champion cards in that deck too, although with champions, you can only actually have one unique champion out on the field at any time. So let's say, for instance, you have a Teemo out on the field. If you draw a Teemo card whilst Teemo's out on the field, it will actually turn into a spell from that champion that you can use to either buff them or do stuff to the enemy. So also, the certain regions of Runeterra are experts in certain types of fighting and certain abilities are more frequently found in certain regions. So let's say for instance Frail Yard are much better at applying Frostbite which removes all attack damage off of a minion for the turn. Or it might be the Shadow Isles who excel in flooding the board with phantoms that only last for one turn but do a lot of damage in a short amount of time and can really really easily like clear the board and basically just control the pace of the game. I'd compare them probably most to if you're familiar with Zudex from Hearthstone, if you play Hearthstone, that's what it is. But there's so many cards that have lots of effects on the card and I'm going to try and run down the list really quickly for you and explain what that type of card actually does. So starting off really simple, we've got play, which basically just means whenever you summon this minion, the effect that is on the card happens. You've got attack, which means that if you attack anything, whether it be the Nexus or another champion, that effect happens. Allegiance is when you draw a card, if it is of the same faction of the card with Allegiance, the effect happens. Burst, which is just a spell card that you can play that the enemy is not allowed to respond to because it happens too quickly. Fast is a type of spell card that you can play during any turn you have that the enemy can respond to. Slow is a spell card that cannot be played during combat or used during a rally of other spells, but it can be used at the beginning of your turn as long as there isn't an ongoing rally between you and the enemy. There are also a massive amount of different card passive types in the game as well that affect minions and how they interact with each other. Some of the traits that a unit can have are stuff like elusive, which means that they cannot be blocked by any unit that isn't elusive itself. Although, if you have a challenger on your side, 
when you're attacking, you actually can grab and drag elusives in to block them to clear them yourself. Fearsome is a unit that stops any unit from blocking it unless it has at least three or more attack. Quick attack lets a unit apply their damage to the enemy unit first before taking its damage itself. So for instance, if Lucian or Senna was about to attack an enemy they would otherwise kill them, they would first apply the damage and that unit would take damage first, then die, meaning that Lucian or Senna actually takes zero damage themselves. Challenger, as I explained earlier, lets you pick which minion you want to block that specific character. Regeneration lets your minion heal to full provided they survive till the end of the turn, regardless of how much damage is taken. Cam Block is pretty self-explanatory, they're an offensive only unit. Last Breath, basically death rattle from Hearthstone, meaning something happens when this unit dies. Overwhelm is a type of unit that means any damage done to a unit on attack carries over and then does the excess damage to the Nexus. Tough, basically just reduces all damage, flat damage by one. Ephemeral, which basically means the unit only exists on the board for one turn, and then after striking or the turn ending, it dies. There's also card effects that can be applied to minions and units as well, like Frostbite, which reduces any unit affected by this's attack power to zero. Barrier can be applied to units, it's essentially like Divine Shield from Hearthstone, mitigating all damage for one turn. There's a lot more, but honestly I feel like these are the probably the most important ones that you can get hype for. Uh, before learning uh, a bit more about the game in depth. So yes, I have definitely just talked your ear off for like 12 straight minutes, but that's pretty much everything that I think you could need to know before you get fired into trying to play Legends of Runeterra. I am not a card game master, I'm not amazing at card games, but hopefully that wasn't too complicated a description of how the game works, and that maybe you actually learned something about it, and there's going to be a lot more me going probably a bit more in depth on the second channel and on this channel itself. So by all means, keep updated, subscribe and put the notification bell on for the next day or so on either channel to learn a little bit more about it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Riot Games for letting me play the game and get footage a week or so in advance. And uh, yeah, have a fantastic day and uh, take care.